Have you ever wondered how our everyday wrenches are made? Let's find out together in this video. It all begins in forging department of the factory. The raw material is carefully selected for the manufacturing process. The steel selected for making the wrenches has one-of-a-kind characteristics. When the raw material arrives, it undergoes dimensional, chemical, and metallographic analysis. The steel bars are cut into sections. The pieces are cleaned in a sandblaster to remove all steel impurities which could enter the metal during the following stages. The pieces now undergo hot rolling and hammer molding which is then loaded into an automatic elevator. The pieces of steel then enter one by one into an induction furnace which then heats them to 1250 degrees centigrade. The originally tough and resistant pieces become ductile and malleable and therefore they can now take the desired shape. The hot rolling mill gives each piece an elongated shape with areas having different diameters in order to obtain the exact quantity of metal to form the wrench. A nitrogen atmosphere protects the purity of the steel from the surrounding oxygen which could cause burns and slacks. The hot rolling mill directs the pre-shaped pieces into an impact machine the hammer. The power of the hammer heavily compresses the hot material between two molds in which the shape to be obtained is then formed. The molds are always kept at a constant temperature in order to avoid shock breaking and to guarantee their accuracy. High levels of concentration, sensibility, and dexterity are must to correctly align and position the hot rolled pieces with the molds and manage the hammer. After a slow cooling period, the next operation takes place. The correct dimensions of the forged pieces are carefully verified. The exceeding material generated by the hammer in the forging phase are eliminated and the wrench now takes its definitive shape. Another dimensional test then follows. After an additional surface cleaning, the rough wrenches are sent to another plant to complete the following phases. Over here, the robots help to eliminate the roughness generated by the blanking, thus smoothing the surface. The wrench is then thoroughly checked by an expert to make sure dimensional accuracy and to check if the tools are in full compliance with the standards. The next process is called tumbling. In this process, the wrenches are put into drums along with stone water and abrasives to smoothen the surface of the wrench. A hydraulic press with special minted imprints embosses the trademark and size. A multi-spindle drill creates accurate bores on the ring end. The mechanical department controls ensures that the operating ends are in full compliance with the tolerances. For correct matching of the tool to the nut, a shaped tool called a brooch is inserted into the bore and pulled down, generating the bihex profile of the tool. The process of the open end is similar, using an external brooch. Special gorges are used to control the product and the dimensional tolerance is related to it. Once again, fire is the key player of the thermal treatment. In the previous phases, fire has made steel malleable and workable. Now it's going to confer hardness, strength, and toughness. The wrench is kept in metal baskets and put in the hardening furnace until reaching a temperature of 850 degrees centigrade. The disassociated methane at a high temperature generates a gas that protects the pieces from oxidation. The hardening phase gives the metal strength and durability. 
The wrenches are then quickly dipped into an oil bath, where they cool rapidly and become very hard and resistant, but not sufficiently elastic. After a thorough washing phase, the wrenches are once again heated to 360 degrees in the furnace, and after a slow cooking to 180 degrees centigrade, they become tough, thus resistant to shocks and stresses. Now the structural transformation of the steel is over. Raw material and hardening are the main quality ingredients of a wrench. The control of the final structure of the steel is crucial and is done before the final phases. This will improve the aesthetics and resistance to impact and corrosion. In large vibrators, the combined action of chemical additives and small ceramic stones perfectly polish all surfaces of the tool which are magnetically separated from the stones. During galvanic treatment with an electrolytic process, a thin layer of material is deposited to add qualities to the wrench that are lacking in the steel, in particular nickel and chrome, to improve aesthetics and render the tool resistant to corrosion, atmospheric agents, and aggressive substances with which the tool will enter into contact during its long life. A thorough visual control shows any aesthetic imperfections. Before the wrench is ready to be sold, there is still several tests which have to be performed. The hardness must always be greater than the ISO specifications. The micro-hardness tester also checks the decarbonization. The hardening and tempering phase has not removed too much carbon and the thickness of the nickel plating must also be uniform and of the correct size. The hardest conditions of use are simulated in the quality control department, where the wrench undergoes torsion tests that overcome even those required by the current standards. Static torsion tests and dynamic torsion tests. Corrosion resistance is tested by dipping the wrench in a saline atmosphere. A further, final test verifies that each batch of wrenches complies to the international standards. Now the combination wrench can be packed and stocked in warehouses which are then delivered worldwide.